City do Pica-Pau Amarelo translates to Yellow Woodpecker Farm. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely want to share that with yes. our kids. <laughs> So Ryan and I are here today to do a fun tag for you. It's called the Future Parents Tag, mm -hmm. which we thought was very fitting for us because we were hoping to be future parents quite soon here. We're gonna be future parents quite soon, right. one way or another. Yes, exactly. We found this tag at Meg's channel, which is called Smarty and Stevo, and she went through infertility, and now she's pregnant with a little baby, and she's doing pregnancy updates. Please go check her channel out. Uh, we're gonna leave it in the description box below. Um, so should we go ahead and start it? Without further ado. All right. We have 10 questions and they're right here. So if you see us looking down, we're looking at the computer here and it's not a back and forth, but I think we're both answering these questions right. as we do this. So we'll have fun with it. We've not talked about it in advance and uh, we'll see what happens here. We're gonna go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here we go. Question number one, how many children do you want to have? I don't know. I feel at this point, going mm -hmm. through infertility and going through the cycle that we just went through, when I ovulated so many eggs, I am actually open to as many as they come. Um, I think that if we have one, we'll be happy. Mm -hmm. If we have triplets, we'll be really, really happy. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I think that's a great answer. Like it's. For, for me, the answer is, you know, whatever the universe provides, you know, um, one would be great. I, I think a big question, though, is would we stop at one? Like, if we, yeah. that to me is the, the question within the question. Right. Like if we had one child, would, would that be all for us, knowing what uh, a difficult process infertility is? Yeah. Maybe, um, but I think that we've also talked in the past about adoption. Yeah. So I could see us going through this process and having one child, but then you know, in the next couple of years down the road, uh, trying to adopt to, to grow the family. Yeah, definitely. Um, Adoption is something that is really strong in our hearts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the we'll, we'll sort of cheat our way through this one. It's like, however many we have, that's great. Probably not just one, because some way, somehow, we would work to remedy that. But uh, yeah, we're, we're getting close to a solution, we hope, at some point here soon. So question number two. What will your children, oh my gosh, that's so hard this for me to say. Twisted. Yeah. What will your children call their grandparents? Grandma. <laughs> Grandpa. <laughs> well, because I am Brazilian and my family, my side of the family speak Portuguese, they'll probably call my dad vovô and my mom vovó. Now, can you hear the difference? Tell me the difference between those two words. <laughs> I have I've been coming to Brazil now for how many years? Nine years. Uh -huh. And I I can finally tell the difference between vovó and vovó. Yeah. But can you tell the difference right. between the two? There is just a different in accent. It's like the difference of a circumflex. Exactly. I think is all it is. Yeah, so I think that it'll be pretty simple. Like for my side of the family, it's gonna be grandma, and then for your side of the family, vovó and vovó. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> simple for them, I guess. <laughs> Still not simple for me. <laughs> Question number three. Uh, do you already have names you both like and agree on? We do. We have a couple of names. We don't have a ton. Mm -hmm. We have a name for a girl and a name for a boy, but we don't have multiple names for girls and for boys. Yeah. And I don't think that this is the right video also for us to dish the no, dirt. I don't think we're no. telling you. No. what the names are that we've picked out, but no. we, we definitely have at least a girl's name and a boy's name picked out. Yeah. But if we were surprised with, you know, with two girls or two boys, then we would really have to start thinking about it. Yeah. The difficult part for us, I think that some families encounter, but you know, if you are a multi-language family, you have to find names that work in both languages because a lot of the pronunciations in Portuguese are really hard for English speakers to to do and the same as English to Portuguese. So right. we have to find names that work both ways. So this is like a challenge. Yeah, Priscilla's name is pretty much the same in both languages, just mm -hmm. a little variation of pronunciation. Right. But Ryan right. does not translate so nicely into Portuguese. Do you want to tell them what your name sounds like? You in tell them. <laughs> so Ryan's name in Portuguese sounds like Hia. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we want to avoid that for our children, <laughs> knowing that they're going to grow up in both countries. Avoid the, avoid the hyung if, uh, if you possibly can. They all call me Ryan now. That's true. Everybody. <laughs> awesome. So question number four. Mm -hmm. What is one movie slash TV show you loved as a kid that you want to share with your kids? 
that's a good question for you because I grew yeah. up in Brazil, so my TV shows and, and movies were mostly, you know, Portuguese. Mm -hmm. I'll say that I am excited to see my kids watch Star Wars for the first time. <laughs> Any of the Star Wars, that. you know, because so I mean, I have fun. I have such fond memories of those movies. I remember, I remember watching them for the very first time, and. I even have memories of my parents telling me what my what my reactions were like when I saw it for the first time. So I just want to see their little eyes bugging out of their little heads. <laughs> How about you? For me, I don't know. There's one particular TV show that I really loved. It's called Situ do Pica Pau Amarelo. If you are Brazilian, <laughs> <laughs> comment below and let me know if you if you remember and if you watched that TV show. And I grew up with it, and it's almost it's the equivalent of Sesame Street here in Brazil. So it's a very fun show with like you know traditional folk culture characters in it. So maybe we'll have the chance to show to our kids mm -hmm. and teach a little bit about Brazilian culture. Something amarelo and Star Wars. Sítio do Pica Pau Amarelo translates to Yellow Woodpecker Farm. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely want to share that with yes. my kids. <laughs> so next question is uh, question number five. How many aunts and uncles will your children have? That's a good question. I've got to do the math here on my side. It's uh, On my side, it's just Renee. I don't have to do the math. So. <laughs> For a second, I was thinking my uncles. I was trying to count my aunts and uncles, but I guess it's just my sister. Yes. So they're going to have one aunt on my side and one uncle, my sister's husband. Right, yeah. Yep. So one uh, from one uncle and one aunt from Ryan's side. And from my side, so I have a brother and a sister. Mm -hmm. And then I have a little sister from my father's second marriage. Um, and she's really, really little. So she will be an aunt, but she will be, yeah. you know, very close in age to our children, hopefully. So from my side, at this point, our kids will have three aunts mm -hmm. and two uncles. So my sister, her husband, my brother, his wife, and my little sister. Yeah. <laughs> Add it all up, that's one big family. That's a lot yeah. of Christmas presents. <laughs> yes. Plus, I mean, just for fun here, in Brazil, it's very customary that all your, um, you know, your friends, like, so the parents' close friends are also called uncle and aunt mm -hmm. in Portuguese. So our kids will grow up not only with their blood relative, uncles and aunts, but also with all our friends being considered uncles and aunts. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they're going to have a lot of tias and tios. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That'll be cute. <laughs> Question number six. What color eyes and hair do you think your child will have? This is a, a fun question because we talk about that a lot. Yep. Yeah. And the answer is brown. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. Because. Right. We don't know that. But most of Ryan's side of the family, you know, he has hazel eyes. Mm -hmm. But his mom, his sister, uh, his grandmother, so a lot of his family has blue eyes. Mm -hmm. um, my family is predominantly brown eyes. Ah, let's, your genes are just going to cancel my genes out. I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty positive. Next question, number seven. Uh, at what age will you allow your kids to have sweets candy? Sweet slash candy. I never thought about that one. No, I haven't you? either, really. Uh, Brazilians eat a lot of sweets, yeah. I have to say, and... If you don't know that, Brazil is the yeah. number one country for sugar consumption in the world. I know that. Uh, there is a lot of sugar production here. Uh, sugar yeah. cane, sugar is made out of sugar cane here, uh, predominantly, so there's a lot of... <laughs> Production and consumption yeah. of sugar. <laughs> I think the answer is it's not really going to be our choice because when yeah. Priscilla's mother gets a hold of them, oh she's going to be just funneling sugar into them. So it's uh, it's for her to decide. And right. We're not like strict health eaters all the time. We indulge as much as you know the the we next person. Yeah. yeah. But we are aware of health eating and we try our best to most of our time eat healthy and exercise and, you know, live a healthier lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this will trickle down to our kids, hopefully. Yeah, we hope that they live really healthy yeah. lives also, and uh, we want to instill really good habits in them yeah. right from the beginning. So question number eight, uh, what kind of holiday traditions are you most looking forward to sharing with your kids? That's a fun one. Yeah, what do you think? 
from me, I love Christmas. Love it. Even though I grew up in the tropics, I, you know, spent half of my life basically in, in North America, in the US. So I love a white Christmas. I mean, I lived yeah. in New York City and in Chicago, so both places had really nice, you know, white Christmas. We were able to have a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So I just can't wait until we have our babies and we can do the whole Christmas tradition with, you know, cookie for Santa the night before, cookie <laughs> and milk, and, you know, have their stockings and uh, do Christmas morning presents in our PJs. This is something that I can't wait. I dream and I envision the day and, you know, it's all in my mind, in my meditation. And Cute. I can see that. Happening. And I pretty much agree here, but I will say also Halloween, just because I have such fond memories as a kid getting dressed up as like a little vampire with little teeth and... <laughs> in my little black cape, so yeah. I'm excited for all of that. I mean, playing dress up with kids uh, is going to be a ton of fun, so I'll say Halloween also. And I will say for Ryan too, football season. I know that's not a holiday, officially, but this one absolutely loves football season, so... This one does. <laughs> They're going to run around in their little Packers jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag go Packers go! <laughs> go Pack go. Question number nine, at what age will you allow your kids to start dating? Oh, that's a good one. Um, when they're out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a little bit more liberal than that. Um, I don't know, I think that it's very important to, for us will be very important to teach our kids to be safe um, and Definitely. to, one thing that I really love that when I was growing up that I was taught is to uh, my parents never forbid me from dating when I was a you know a teenager, but they always kept my boyfriends and friends here in the house. So mm -hmm. there was always like an openness when it came to dialogue with my parents, and I would like to do the same with our kids. Yeah, I think that's the right way to yeah. do it. Also, yeah, I'd like to be really really involved in the process, not like an overbearing parent involved, but yeah. you know, become friends with that person and make sure that there is then some accountability in that way. Yeah. I, I want to be a household with just lots of conversation and, yeah. and make sure that you know everybody's on the same page and I, I would always rather there be no secrets, you know, that people, you know, that, that our kids can feel like they're, they're yeah. they can be honest with us and comfortable with us. Yeah. And even if they make mistakes. So yeah. that's that's the sort of household I think that we'll try to provide. Agreed. Last question, mm -hmm. um, number 10. What part of parenthood are you most looking forward to? I think we're just looking forward to being parents. Yeah. You know, I don't know if there's one particular stage of parenthood that we're looking forward to. I think we've been watching videos online lately yeah. that have uh, like little toddlers running around. So to me, it, it seems like a lot of fun, you know, once they, when you can see their personality start to develop and they're able to interact with you and talk with you and start to string together, you know, those words and the sentences yeah. and have conversations, I think that'll be a ton of fun. So when you can start to see maybe your own imprint upon them, I think that'll mm -hmm. be great. So I'm, I'm looking forward very much to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great answer. I am the same. I think yeah. that I look forward to every single phase, you know, obviously from having a baby and like being able to understand the miracle of that being in front of you because the truth is that we're all miracles and, you know, being able to make one, it will be incredible. And, you know, seeing that little baby, that little miracle transform into a toddler mm -hmm. with its own personality and learning milestones, you know, in life. I think that would be amazing. And obviously we are not naive to think that, you know, every single step will be beautiful and <laughs> No. And just dreamy. <laughs> we understand that there will be, you know, obstacles and, and difficulties as mm -hmm. well. But we are looking forward to being parents so much that I think that once that moment comes for us, we are going to see everything as like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we're also smart, so we're yeah. sleeping now. We're catching yeah. up on sleep right now because... We pretty much know it's coming. <laughs> it's true, it's true. So, so yeah. Yeah, so that's it guys. Uh, those are our 10 questions, our future parents tag. Uh, if you're interested in doing the same, please do and uh, and let us know. We'd love to hear your answers to these questions. We're going to leave all the questions that we that we answered today down below in the description box in mm -hmm. case you need it. And we really hope you liked it. Yeah, so if you liked our video, please give us a great big thumbs up. And do remember to hit that subscribe button down mm -hmm. below. And as always, leave a lovely comment for us. And uh, we'll look forward to reading it. 
Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.